Welcome to Resume Writing with the Office of Career and Professional Development. By viewing this presentation, you will be able to create and complete a professional resume that reflects relevant skills and experiences. Everyone is always going to be at different stages with their knowledge of resume writing, so we will be going over all aspects of it. So what is a resume? A resume is a professional document it is the employer or reader of the resume's first impression of you. This document is going to be the representation of your skills and experiences. When submitting this resume, you have about 20 to 30 seconds to grab the reader's attention. So you need to make sure that it stands out, make sure that it doesn't look like everyone else's. It's professional and should have your unique formatting style. A resume is a fluid document that is going to evolve. Each time you have new experiences to add, you will need to go in and edit your resume. First, let's start with formatting. Microsoft Office Word is the best program to utilize because of the ease and accessibility for resume writing and editing. No matter what program you decide to use, whether it's Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or Pages, avoid using templates. Employers and recruiters will be able to tell if you use a template, and they might think that you did not put any effort into it. Also, not all templates use the proper format for resumes. They often have preset margins and subheadings that may not be the best for displaying your unique experiences. The best thing to do is to open a fresh Word document, allowing you to have control over your spacing, margins, and subheadings. Keep the resume to one page. Unless, however, you're applying to positions in education, social welfare, technical fields, or if you're applying to graduate school. If you're going on to the second page, make sure that the relevant and important content is on the first page in case they do not read your second page. Stay away from photos or graphics on your resume unless you're entering a field that requires this. For example, if you want to design a visual arts resume, there are some specifics for that, including that you design your own graphics and make sure your brand is consistent across your documents and website. Margins should be equal on the top, bottom, left, and right. One inch margins are the standard for resumes and they're the default in Word. You can reduce your margins if you need extra space, but do not make them smaller than 0.6. Times New Roman is a clean and professional font but it is also one of the most common fonts for resumes and used in academia. One option to make your resume stand out even more would be to use a different font. Some good resume fonts are hanging fonts and include but are not limited to the ones listed on our resume formatting handout. Some of these fonts are tighter, smaller, or wider, and you can pick whichever one is best for your needs. Your name should be the most prominent thing on the page. That's usually between 14 to 20 point font, and your content should be between 10 and 12 point font. Let's move on to the heading information. Be sure to avoid the header and footer tool in Word because it messes with your formatting. Instead, type your heading information directly into the document and design it yourself. Do not utilize pre-programmed fonts and sizes. Your heading information should include your full name at the top, and it should be the most prominent, your permanent address or your local address, depending on where you're applying. If you do not feel comfortable using your address, just include your city and state. This is used for employers to see how far away you are or how expensive it would be to bring you in for an interview or relocation. Next, include your email address, your telephone number, and some optional things to include are your LinkedIn URL, an online portfolio URL, or the URL to your website. Pick a style that meets your needs. If you need to expand your resume to make a full page, pick a heading that takes up more lines. If you need to condense things to be all on one page, pick a heading that takes up one to two lines. Make it easy for employers to contact you. Only list one email and phone number. You can use your albany.edu email address or one that is professional like your first.lastname at gmail.com if you're graduating. Keep in mind that your albany.edu address expires one year after graduation. 
Include a signature with information, including but not limited to your name, degrees, or title. For your phone number, make sure that your voicemail does not reach over capacity. You want to make sure that employers are able to contact you. Your education section should be the first section after your heading. You will always do these in reverse chronological order with the most recent first. The first thing you need to include is the full title of the institution. Next, you will list the degree, then major, then any minors or concentrations, and then the expected or completed graduation date. You can include your GPA, honors, and relevant coursework. When you list relevant coursework, make sure you are writing out the full titles of the classes, not the course codes. Relevant coursework can show employers that you have foundational knowledge in the area or field, and even though you might not have professional experience yet, you have studied and analyzed it in the classroom. When adding study abroad, you should also include your coursework or internships you might have done there. If you're listing another school, or if you transferred in, make sure to follow the same format as the one above. Don't include previous colleges from which you transferred if you do not have a degree from there. On your resume, you want to differentiate your experiences by breaking them up into different subsections. On our resume and curriculum by Tay formatting handout, there are some examples of subsection headings. When you have different sections, you can arrange these in order of importance, and they help to keep your resume organized. You can design these however you want, but make sure that they stand out. You can bold them, underline them, add in line symbols to go all the way across, put them on the left or in the middle. On our formatting handout, you can see the information you need to include. You can list the items however you want, one line, two lines, title first, employer first, be sure that you're consistent with how you format the title, employer, location, and dates. Whatever section comes next should be what is most important and relevant to the reader. When this section is created, it should be based on whatever you're applying for or interested in. Look at the posting and see what qualifications they're looking for and the duties of the position. Tailor your relevant experience towards that. When you are writing bullet points about your experiences, there's a specific way to do so. These should be written in third-person narrative, in fragmented statements. You should not write statements with I or my. Example A is an example of someone writing a bullet point for a waiter position in first person. Example B is an example of a way we can transform that statement into a cleaner and more professional bullet point. Reverse chronological order means that you need to start with the most recent position at the top and the oldest at the bottom. You will repeat the reverse chronological order for each subsection on your resume. If you have two positions that are still present, look to the date you started them to decide which should go first. If you have two positions that are still present and you started them at the same time, then you can decide which one you want to place first and second. Write your duties and experiences in bullet points. There is no rule for how many bullet points you need to include. You can have one position with five bullet points, one with two, and one with no bullet points. Make sure that your bullet points are action-oriented descriptions detailing what your tasks were and what you accomplished. So think about what you did, how you did it, why you did it, and any results you achieved. When beginning the statements, try to use a variety of action verbs due to how most employers read the resumes. Past jobs should be written in past tense. Present jobs should be written in present tense. Sometimes we will have multiple positions with the same employer, but in different departments. This format is beneficial for when you're trying to be effective with the white space in the middle. You can put the name of the employer at the top and then put the department names next to your titles. This example does not include the city and state of the employer because it was already written in the education section. Normally, you would need to include the location. Sometimes we have multiple positions with the same organization, department, or club. 
This is an example of someone who joined this club in September 2017 and then was the secretary and then became the vice president. Resume documents can showcase skills in addition to experiences such as the ones listed. Depending on what you're applying for is how you would decide where your skills should be. For example, if you're applying to a computer science job, it would make sense for your technical skills to be higher up on your resume as that is going to be of importance to the employer. Additional skills are great, but shouldn't be listed on the resume. Instead, they can be showcased in cover letters, bullet points for positions, for example, presented on health topics for 30 plus students and faculty once a week. They can also be showcased in your LinkedIn profile or during an interview when you're talking about yourself. In the skills section, sometimes people will add certifications and interests if they feel it's relevant to what or where they're applying to. In addition to the skills that I listed on the previous slide, language is an important skill that you can add to your resume. Be sure to write your linguistic fluency when listing language skills, because if you just write the language, the reader will start to assume your proficiency. Some ways that you can list your language skills are fluent, meaning nearly perfect skills. So this is usually attained through extended study or time spent living in full linguistic immersion. Native, meaning this is your first language and you most likely think and process in this language. Proficient, meaning that you're skilled and you use this language with more formality. So you're less familiar than fluent and native speakers. And the last is basic proficiency, meaning that you have minimal skills, basic speaking and comprehension skills. If you are going into a field that requires that you have some advanced technical skills, this is one example of how you could list these out. You can also use the job posting to figure out what technical skills you should add to your resume. References should always be their own document and save it until you're asked for it. Do not write things like references available upon request on your resume. Follow the heading formatting from your resume. Title it Professional References. Make sure you ask the people you're listing in advance if they would like to be positive references for you. Then ask them how they would like to be contacted and list only that phone or email. Save this for when an employer asks for it or if you need to submit it with your application. You can bring a hard copy of this to your interview with you, but only give it to the employer if they ask for it. Always be sure to send your resume as a PDF document unless otherwise specified. This is so the formatting will transfer over properly and no one can make edits to your resume. When you save it, make sure it is labeled professionally. You can label it with your name, name and date, or name and the employer. In Handshake and LinkedIn, make sure you check your settings in terms of how many documents you have and if they're public or not. When saving in Handshake, be as specific as possible so you do not send the wrong one and so it's easy for us to identify which ones to give to employers that would like to interview you. In Handshake, try to delete older resumes and not use it like a flash drive. If you need help building a resume, or if you would like your resume critiqued, we are available to do so virtually. Undergraduate resumes are reviewed by our peer career advisors. All critiques are done by appointment, Monday through Friday, between 9 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. All graduate and alumni resumes up to five years out are reviewed by our professional staff and graduate assistants. To make an appointment, log into Handshake. In the top menu, select Career Center, then appointments. Select schedule a new appointment, choose your appointment type, and you will see a list of dates and times available to book your appointment. We hope that you use this presentation as a guide for your resume. To access our resume and curriculum vitae formatting handouts and additional resources, please visit our virtual handout wall at albany.edu slash career. If you have any questions, you can send us an email at career at albany.edu or call 518-437-4900. If you would like to stay on top of employer events, discussions, and career tips, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter 
using our handle at UAlbany Career.